So this is a fire ant nest, and I'm going to be casting it today with aluminum. Uh, fire ants are an invasive species to the southeast United States. Uh, they cause a lot of damage to the ecology. They will kill other native ant species and com almost completely wipe them out of their native range. So casting these guys is actually doing a service for the environment. They are definitely a pest. So here I've created a little dam out of sand and this keeps all the molten aluminum inside so it doesn't roll across the yard, catching everything on fire. Uh, it also works really well to make a nice flat base uh, for the sculpture when I take it out of the ground. I'm using aluminum ingots and little scrap pieces from my uh, previous anthill castings. The reason I'm using these instead of just pure scrap is because uh, whenever you melt down the scrap you get a lot of impurities. So what I do is I melt down the scrap once, take all the impurities out, and then I pour myself these bars. And then once I have a anthill, I'll just melt down the bars real quick and pour the handle. That way I have clean aluminum on demand. I don't have to worry about scraping off tons of slag or dealing with weird shaped pieces, trying to fit it down into the crucible. It's just a lot easier to do it in two steps instead of trying to do everything at once. Speaking of scrap, I got some really cool uh, things to melt down in the future. This is a rudder for a seaplane that goes on the floats. This is a part, uh, I'm not too sure where from, but it goes to a helicopter. This is the piece that connects the rudder of a plane to the fuselage. Over here, this thing is a wing strut. It goes from the fuselage to the wing. And over here, I got cleaning up these guys since they're a little greasy, uh, our piston heads, which are made of aluminum for aircraft. Uh, I'm thinking about doing a separate video, uh, just melting down everything. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys would be interested in that. that I use in order to pour excess aluminum into. And that's what gives me all these little bars here. Uh, and the reason I'm putting them on top of the furnace right now is to uh, preheat them. If you don't heat them up, there's always gonna be a little bit of moisture uh, hidden somewhere in that mold. If you pour about 2000 degree Fahrenheit molten aluminum on it, it will be nearly an explosion which sends molten aluminum all over you. It's not fun. So you want to make sure you heat up all your permanent molds. Um, basically anything that the molten aluminum that it is touching other than sand, you want to preheat. Uh, you can get yourself into a very bad situation if you do 
not reheat your bolts. All right, so here what I'm doing is there's always gonna be a little bit of aluminum oxide or dirt or whatever uh, on top of the aluminum that's gonna float to the surface. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting all that stuff off and revealing the nice, clean, pure aluminum down here. Since these are nice, clean bars, I barely have to do anything. Just that single little scoop, I'm all done. Now I am ready to pour. I need this out of the way. Down, go ahead and add some more. Fill up that base here without overtopping, hopefully. All right, looks like that's it. And so I'll go ahead and pour my bricks. reason they're made out of graphite and not something like iron is because graphite's very slick so they fall right out iron you'd have to probably bang them around a few times to get the ingots to fall out All right, since this one's a small one, I'm gonna have to dig it out pretty carefully. So. So what I do to dig them out, is I dig a hole to the side of them and then slowly work my way in towards the casting itself. So now that I'm getting close to the casting, I'm gonna start using this little shovel. That way I can feel a lot easier before I put a lot of force onto the shovel, potentially breaking the casting. Because sometimes the 
casting will only be held together by like one single tunnel. And so that puts a lot of force in that one tunnel. So if you just hit the casting wrong, you could snap it. So it looks like we might have a root running through the middle of it. So I want to be careful about this root. Same thing with these ones. All right, so. All right, so now I'm working slowly by hand here because I don't know how much further down it goes. I don't want to dig too deep right now or else the entire weight of the casting could be only resting upon a few tunnels and that would not be good for the casting putting too much weight on single little strands like that could easily break them so what i'm trying to do is slowly dig down all around the sides here until i find the roots that are holding it in place and then i should be able to work my way down, finding the end of those castings while supporting it myself. Casting starting to feel a little free. Here it is. Got a couple of roots still attached. Oh, this one looks nice. Here, come over here. There we go. Try and rinse off a little bit here. Now that one looks a little loose. Yeah. take it over to the table and clean up the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah, no, so the reason that this is all messed up over here is because all that steam that came up very violently just didn't allow the aluminum to come in as a solid piece so this is very thin just like a shell aluminum it's pretty interesting
rest of the casting looks like it's done very well though.